Yes, shalom, Chavarim, shalom. Did the sun really stand still? As in the Bible story, narrative, you know, Joshua, Joshua and that battle that was going on and he, he prayed that the sun, the sun would stand still. Did the sun really stand still? Now the heliocentrists would say, like the globalists would say, this proves that the Bible, let's bring this up right here. Science from the Bible, the sun and the moon stood still for a whole day. They say that fails, all right, according to the heliocentrist. Does it say that? Does it really say that? Did the sun stand still? Or according to the science of the linguistics? See, people talk about science, but, you know, in the translations may not have been translated fully or properly or something is lost in translation. If you say blame on the translation, also you could blame on the pseudoscience of nowadays heliocentrists. Because listen, according to them, if the sun stood still, right? And according to them, everything is spinning around the sun, right? The sun is at the center of this, this just spin. The sun is spinning at millions of miles and the and the earth is spinning around the sun and everything else. All the so-called planets, wandering stars are also spinning and everything is spinning and spinning and spinning. According to the Bible, for the sun and the moon to um, stand still for a whole day. <laughs> yeah, but what does the Bible really say? What does the Hebrew really say? We give thanks for the KJV, the King James Hebraicist, right? The Hebraicist, those who knew the Hebrew then. Many of your pastors and preachers don't know no Hebrew, right? Talk about speaking in tongues. What tongues do they speak in? English? Come on now. Or even the Greek. But we're not going to the Greek. We're getting to the roots right here with the Hebrew. So let's look at this particular verse and bring out what does it mean to stand still, right? According to the Hebrew, what does it mean to stand still? You know that biblical verse, that biblical verse that goes like, be still, <laughs> be still and know, right? This is the same kind of be still and know right there. Let's bring this up right here. Okay, boom. Let's uh, go to my sword, my sword, my sword. Right here, we already looked it up right here. Let's bring this up. Be still. Be still. Scroll down here. It's this particular one right here, Psalm 46 and 10. Right? And then you see the next verse it has was still. Now, still here is the H8252. Right? Shakat. Shakat. Right? Or some may say Shaket. A shakat, shakat. Within a mod in Hebrew, shakat, shakat, shakat. Right? And this here, BDB Brown Drivers Briggs, means to be quiet, to be tranquil, to be at rest. Right? This is a general sense right here to be at rest, to be inactive, to be quiet. Let's scroll down here to strong. Strong is a primitive root, Afro Shemitic root, says to repose. Usually used in a figurative sense, right? Shek at, well, we say shek at like, to say shek at like, tell somebody shek at, shek at in the Hebrew, like to be quiet. Shh, shh, sh shek at, shek at, right? From shakat, right? Now that's in Psalm 76 and 8, right? Thou discourse judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth she feared, <laughs> she also, the genders are not really brought out, right? The genders, right? When I say the genders, not speaking genital, but the, the male-female double helix, which is very important, very interesting, because people say, well, why God, 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 he, 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 he? Well, if you can read the Hebrew, you'll find out about she, even she in he. But that's another matter. Pick up on that, hopefully. Psalm 46 and 10. Let's go to Psalm 46 and 10. Let's bring up the Tanakh right here. Go to the Hebrew. Harpu u'de'u. Kia no kia Elohim. Arum ba'goyim. Arum ba'aretz. The verse right here. Plain KJV. Be still and know that I am 
God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. So when it says be still, be still. The still there, be still is the 87503. So we touched on, touched on one still, right? Because when we hear the word still, we think of it in English, right? Mm, but sometimes wrong. Rafa, we have Rafa. Rafa here means to sink, to relax, to sink down, to let drop, to be, in one sense, to be disheartened, to sink down, to drop, to withdraw, right? To let drop, right? To abandon, to show oneself slack, it says, right? Here, the Strong's definition, primitive root, the African Shemitic root, Afro Shemitic root, it says to slacken, to slacken, like let loose, let loose, relax. The sense of it here, right, is like we would say relax, relax, easy, relax. It's like the one drop, relax, right? Double wise, relax. Harpu, it's the harpu. Harpu, right, from the Rafa or harfu. Right, in one pointing, harpu, right, from the rafa, rapa, right, the same word right there, harpu, u, du, u, u, du, u, du, u, from da'a, right, da'a, right, yada, 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 to know, to know, be still, relax, right, and become acquainted with this. Now, I'll point to this right here, right, because if we go through, there's a lot of besides the still waters. Notice right here, the still waters in Psalm. 23 and 2, just to get an idea of still, what sort of still. So we had Shakat, we had Rafa, and here we have Menucha, 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 another type of still. Remember just the three Psalms right here. This is a resting place sort of still, Menucha, Menucha, Strong's also has as repose, but a different sort of repose, right, from the Rafa repose in Psalm 40. 6 and 10, harpu, harfu, udu'u, be still and know. Here we have, here we have menucha, menucha. Menucha is the feminine, menucha. Here you see menucha is the feminine, right? The feminine of the H4495. Manoach, manoach, manoach is rest. Now remember, Samson had a father and mother, right? According to the script, Samson's father was Manoach. Manoach. Sounds a lot like that other one, Noach. Noah. Noah. Noach. Noch. But here we have Manoach, which is a rest, right? He was Danite, father of the judge, uh, Samson, inhabitant of Zorah, right? But this also comes from a root, the H4494, we're getting to the roots right here, right? General sense, rest, right? Here we have Manoach. So we have the name Manoach, Manoach, right? Then we get down here to, right, Manoach, resting place, right? A resting place. But there's a further root, the H5117. This is what you got to do. Right, if you're going to talk about what the Hebrew Bible says, maybe you should be talking about what the King James Bible says and what you think it means based on the translation. Strong's definition from the H5117, quiet. That is concretely a settled spot, Manoach, Manoach. So the man, Manoach, right? Like the place, a place, Manoach. Like this place, Manoach, right? A settled spot. Like a home also is like Manoach, Manoach, a settled place. But the root, getting to the root, the age 5117, we have Nuach, Nuach, related to even the name Noah or Noah, Nuach, Nuach, right? To rest, to settle down, to remain, to repose, to have a rest. Also, we have the sense of being quiet, to leave, abandon, permit, so forth and so on. But now, do you think that all these words, shakat, right, rafa, right, or alternative rapa, right, and manoach, you think that because the English says something similar, that these words are just all saying the same thing? That would be an error. 
a primitive root to rest, to settle, settle down. Notice it's used in a great variety of application because context is important. Right? It's like they talk about physics, right? In physics, you know, how the viewer, right, how what is being viewed is shaped by the viewer. They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So the context, right, how you are beholding this, right? So right here, we have Psalm 20, Psalms 23. Right, Psalm 23, this famous uh, kind of a bedtime verse, especially for children, you know, Psalm 23. Um, right, so this is just bringing out, he makes me lie down to lay down, right? Be Neot, be neot, right? The na'a, na'a is a pasture. So be neot in the pastures, deshe, 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 the green, deshe, right? Yarbitseini, yarbitseini, he calls me to rabat. To rabat is to stretch oneself out. So the idea to stretch out, uh, you know, one of the, you know, beautiful things, you know, I recall, you know, is just taking a rest like in the park on nice green grass on a nice day. This is the idea here. Be a note, be not desha yarvitseini. All may, all, all upon may, may. What is the may? Right? May Mayim, right? We have the the waters, but here it's a constructive sense. So may is to say the waters of. The waters of may, all may upon, all is upon, all may upon the waters. Minuchot, minuchot. So you remember minuchot? It's a plural sense. Minucha, right? The feminine form of it. In a singular sense, a resting place, singular. Minuchot, resting places. Ye nahleni, ye nahleni from nahal. Nahal means like to lead, to lead. Like you lead, they say you could lead the horse to the water, right? Like to lead to like a watering station, right? To lead on to like a journey, the stages. But when we get to the primitive root idea, properly is to run with a sparkle, a sense of sparkle, right? To lead, to flow. Right, so we have the word for to lead somewhere, right? The sense of lead, but it's leading in a particular context, according to the linguistic science of the Hebrew here. Hence, transitively can mean to conduct, right? By inference to protect, to sustain, but often translated as to carry, to feed, to guide, to lead on, right? But there's a sense of the root idea of the flow and sparkle which has a very intimate idea with water. So here we have bin odesha yarvitseni alme minuchota yinahleni. So here, 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 oh Gaia, the, the the valley, the valley right there. You saw a gay right there, but Gaia. Right? Like we say gay today means one thing, one time meant happy, but in the Hebrew gay meant valley. Right? In Greek the Gaia, Gaia means earth. And Georgis, George, means earth worker. But that's beside the point right here. The point is about the sun being still. So we just zoomed in on still, right? On still, right? On still. So here we have Yehoshua, right? Not to be confused with Yeshua. <laughs> here we have Yehoshua, Old Testament Joshua, Yehoshua, where it says, Then spake Joshua to Yahuwah in the day when... Yahweh delivered up the Amorites before the Bnei Yisrael, the sons of Israel. And he said in the sight of Yisrael, Yasharala, Son, stand thou still up on upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon or Ayalon. This is the first part of the the context of what's going on right here, here, here. So now, 
The ones who say, well, stand still, it meant that the sun stopped moving. Hmm. The sun is not moving. You mean it's movement over the earthly plane? Or do you mean in a so-called helio, a Hellenistic, a, a Hellenistic centric or a heliocentric perspective? Right? Or do you mean moving in orbit over this earthly plane? Because the earth is not a planet. Planet means wandering star. They want to make you believe right, that humanity is just not that important because they don't feel that important. But anyway, Joshua 10 and 12 says, Then spake Joshua to Yahuwah. Let's bring this out in the Hebrew right here. Well, before we even get into the fuller verse, let's zoom in on some key words here. We have the sun, Shemesh, Shamshun, Shamshun, right? Samson, right? Samson's name from Shemesh. Shemesh, Shemesh means sun. In the Hebrew, sun, sun, simply sun. These are some of the related senses here. I'd like to break it down with strong concordance, but use BDB as a point of kind of contrast. Because sometimes BDB breaks it down in certain ways that we can get and share some of the roots. But strongs often, not always, but many, many, many times gives a good direct context of it because Strong's, Ksenius, Lexicon, and the rest of them looked into the Ethiopic. They did not neglect, you know, the Ethiopian, the Ethiopic, the ancient, we could say Shemitic and the African Shemitic from their diligence in their work. But that being that, Strong's definition from an unused root meaning to be brilliant. The sun by implication, the implication, see, it's literally the sun, Shemesh, but the implication could mean the east. Why? Because what is called sunrise, right? Notice, well, you can't notice until you see it for yourself, but take my word for it and, and verify it on your own, that in the Hebrew, the sense of sun rising and sun setting is not the, in the Afro-Shemitic, it's translated as the sun rise, like we get the idea that it's going up and then going down. But that's not the idea in the Hebrew, right? But where the sun enters in, so to speak, or when the light rays rise over the earthly plane, right, from the east. So to say Shemesh is directly to say Hashemesh, the sun. But the implication, what's implied there is the east in a figurative sense. Like when it says that Yahweh is a sun, a shemesh, and a, and, a, and a shield. Some say, you see, they were worshiping the sun. It says Yahweh is a shemesh. See, they hear the word, but they don't get the spirit of the word. You see what I'm saying? It's not the letter right, of the law, but the spirit of what's being said. Right? One can speak English, but you, do you understand the etymology of the English words? If, once you begin to understand, you might not want to speak for a moment. Just like the sun. <laughs> We're going to get to that. Figuratively, a ray. That is, architecturally, notice this. So this word can be broken down, and even among the ancients was broken down in these ways. That is, architecturally. So the sun in architecture a notched battlement, a notched battlement, right? So here we get to the root right here is the H, it says see also the H 1053. Here we have a place called Beit Shemesh. Beit is house, house of the sun, right? Some people look at this and they compare it with on, 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 or on, 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 Heliopolis in ancient Egypt, what's what the Greeks called Heliopolis or the city of On, right? But we notice right here, notice that there are four places that was known as the house of the Shemesh, the house of the sun. One was southwest Yehuda. There was a town in Naphtali, a town in Yisakar, and a town in Mitzrayim, in the Samatawi, in the Smaitawi, in the two lands. Right, the two lands known as Mitzrayim and called Egypt. Right, so here, 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 the house of the Shemesh, the house of the sun. Right, so we have Shemesh for sun. Sun. Right now, according to the context of this, Yehoshua, Joshua, Old Testament, Joshua was speaking directly to the sun. 
People say talking to yourself, it's good if you do it healthily, right? He talked to the sun, right? He's speaking to the sun. Sun, stand thou still up on Gibeon. Now, what's Gibeon? Gibeon is a particular mount. And thou moon in the valley of Ayalon. So the positioning here was that the sun was in the position or moving into the position up on the mount called Gibeon, right? And the moon was in position or moving into position in the valley of Ayalon, right? But what is this word still? That's the command word right here. Sun, stand thou still. So here, let's get to the Hebrew first of all. Let's get to this particular verse right here. Let's bring up the Tanakh, right? The Tanakh as our point of reference. So here's the verse. It says, Az yidabir Yehoshua la Yahuwah biyom teta Yahuwah etaha emori lifnei b'nei Yisrael wa yomer le ainei Yisrael. Okay, before the eyes, le aine Yisrael, in the eyes, the eye of Yisrael, the eyes of Israel. Shemesh, let's highlight this right here, right? There's Shemesh, Shemesh, the first command he gives right there, what's highlighted on the screen. Shemesh, be give on, modern Hebrew, be give on, ancient point, be give on, give on, be Give on Dom 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 da da Dom 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 Yeah Dom the Dom <laughs> Dom D O M right or in a more Lashan Kadash of some of the Israelite Dawam Dawam but in Hebrew mature Hebrew Dom as we teach our children Dawame Dawam and Dawam Dom 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 Dom. That's the command right there. Then he says, We Yariach. We Yariach. Yariach. Yariach is the moon. Be Aimek Ayalon. Be Aimek in the Aimek. In the depression, the sunken place. When we say the earth is not flat, flat, but we have the horizon always on the level, right? But we know it's not a Baal. Ball with Yariach Beemek Ayalon. So the first part here, right? Shemesh. So he speaks to the the sun. Why Yomer Yahoshua, Joshua? Why Yomer? And he said Le Ainai Yisrael. And he said in the eyes of Yisrael. So why Israel is seeing this, right? Shemesh, sun, speaking directly to. The entity known as the sun, Shemesh be Gibon, be Gibon, on Gibon, right? Or Gibeon, as it's said in the English today, Doma, Doma. Let's go here to the Strong's words so we can go through this, right? Take some baby steps right here. Stand thou still. So he says, Dom, Dom in the Hebrew. Remember, we touched on three words for still, right? Shakat. Remember, the first one was Shakat, right? That was the first one. Rafa, right? Right? Rafa in Psalm 46, right? Be still and know, right? Harpu, Udu'u. And then we had touched on, what was the next one right there? We touched on um, 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 Manoach. Manoach, Manoach, or, or Minu, Minuach, Minuach, right? For still, the still waters, Minuchot, Minuchot, right? By the still waters, Meya Minuchot, the, the, the waters of, of restfulness, of repose, right? But here, this still here in Hebrew is Damam. The root is Damam, and the verb, when speaking to a male, right, singular, right, to be still is dome. But what kind of still is dome, right? Dome, da-da-dome, dome. BDB brings it out as to be silent. 
So did the sun stand still or was the sun silent? See, there's a deeper aspect of, of, of the Hebrew, we could say the real science, right? The real science. A lot of it gets lost in translation, right? And has gotten lost in translation. So people thought that the sun stands still, right? What do you think still was? Right, still, right? Was it running around and shakat? It wasn't shakat, right? It wasn't rafa. Remember, rafa also can mean to sink, to become depressed, right? As a word, wouldn't want that, <laughs> you know, not with that orb of fire, you know, becoming depressed or sinking down on the earthly plane. It wasn't that right there, right? Um, which one was it? It wasn't a resting place to say rest. He didn't say for the sun to rest, right? But he said for the sun, right? Shemesh be gibon dom, right? Be silent. Now that is brought out as be still, as you see right there. Wait, be dumb, grow dumb, dumb. Wait, 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 wait. Dumb is like not dumb, like you're stupid dumb, but like you're you're not speaking. Right, like what happened to um, to John the Baptist's father, Zacharias, right? Zachariah, Zachariah, you know, where he did not admit what the angel, the Gabriel, had said to him, and he said, "Well, this is the sign that you will be dumb, right, until these things come to pass." He was not able to speak, right. So if I said, "Well, yeah, I was dumb while they were saying all these things against me. I was silent." I was silent. This is what it's saying. This is what Yehoshua, according to Joshua, chapter 10, verse 12 and verse 13, is saying that the sun did, right? In its being, according to the English, being um, still, right? Being silent, right? To be still, metaphorically, sense is to die. Right? In other words, I'm arguing, I'm arguing, the person's arguing, but then I decide to be dumb. I'm not, I'm not saying nothing. It's like my argument is, is moot, is mute, like, you know, to struck dumb, to be silenced, right? To made silent, right? Metaphorically or in a, in a figurative expression, destroyed, to make quiet. But the, the key sense is to be silent. But notice that he feels sense means to cause to die, right? To cause to die in a sense. The direct sense is to not speak. Mm-hmm is to not speak. Now, the same word, right? The same word, damam, the root word right here, is translated in the King James Version of the Bible in other places like this. To cease, to be cut down, to forbear, to hold peace, to quiet self. Remember, silent, to rest in that sense of quieting self, to be silent, Right to keep silence or be put to silence. He's saying to the sun, being put to silence. Shemesh begibon dom. Be now. Notice in the parenthesis it says stand. Notice that to be right to be still. Right to tarry. The sense of it is to wait. But here's the interesting thing about this right here. Right, just zooming in on on the sun. Does the sun speak? Does the sun speak? All right. We just ask that question. Does the does the does the sun speak? Can we do we hear the sun speak? All right. Now it all depends scientifically of speaking and talking. There's a song where it says, um, where their voice is not heard, right? And it likens the sun to like a mighty man to run to run a race. Right? How did they used to run the races in the ancient days? Remember, they used to run like in the stadium in the circle, right? It was like in a circle, right? <laughs> Almost like the earthly plane, right? Sun stands still. Sun, be silent. A better translation would have been sun upon Gibeon, be silent. Or sun, be silent up on Gibeon. Oh, my bad. I didn't touch on Gibeon. Right, just the the key words. It's three. It's three particular words. Right, three particular words in Joshua's command to the sun. What were the three words? Shemesh, sun. Right, Shemesh, be 
Gibeon, upon Gibeon, dome. Upon Gibeon, dome. Let's go to Gibeon. What does Gibeon mean, right? Gibeon. So here we have the H1391. Gibeon. Gibeon, right? The King James Version, they say Gibeon. You know, that's how the Hebraic is. It's a hill city, right? A hill city, according to the natural type, right? Um, here from the same as this right here. So let's get to the root right here. A hilly place from Geba. Geba, 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 right? Gaba, Geba, right? Gibia, right? A hill. In modern time, they call it Jeba, Jeba, right? Jebul, Jeba, right? Like a mound, a hillock, right? Let's go deeper. It says, same as the H1375, Gibia, right? Gibia, Gibia, Gibia is a what? Is a cup is a bowl, right? A cup, a bowl, right? Bring it down right here. Notice what the strong definition says, from an unused, that means uh, ancient African Afro-Semitic root word, meaning to convex. Mm. Now, some take this that Joshua was saying to the sun to position itself, like stop its motion, right? Stop its motion up on Gibeon which intimates, right, as many have more rightly, you know, assess what the Bible is describing, even though technically, right, um, some interesting, some interesting things that are brought out by, by the flat earthers can be proven by the Bible, right, more things, but a few things that even the flat earthers should take uh, stock of from the global people. Not saying that the global people are right and accurate, right? But there's some things that they take stock of, and this will help to expand, you know, the articulation, right, of the so-called flat earth. We call it the plain truth of the plain, the earthly plane, but that's a whole other matter. But let's look at this word right here, convex, a goblet, right? By analogy, the calyx, you see, you know what the calyx of a flower is? The calyx of a flower, right? C-A-L-Y-X. C-A-L, right? Let's do this right here. C-A-L-Y-X. Let's bring this up right here. C-A-L-Y-X. Spinning eastwards over a thousand miles per hour. C -A -L -Y -X. The clouds, wind, and okay, weather patterns could not casually right and unpredictably go every which right, way. Right, let's get off of that page right there. Calyx. Calyx. Here's the word calyx, right? Calyx. So some interpret it that... Remember, the Hebrew, we call it the Hebrew two truths, that there is the two truths, the two application of the word. Words can be applied to earthly, natural things or heavenly things, can be applied to outer things or inner things, can be applied to the literal, right, the literal thing, right, or to it in a figurative sense. Right? Calyx. So we have... Calyx. Well, they say calyx. We say calyx. They say calyx. What does calyx mean? Calyx comes from the discipline of botany. Right. Notice what it says: the sepals or sepals of a flower, typically forming a hall, a hall that encloses that does what that encloses the petals and forms a protective layer. Now, in zoology, it's a cup-like cavity or structure. So what was Joshua saying right here, right? Look at the calyx, right? Sepals, right? Let's get a visual because many of us are visual, right? Notice right here, visually speaking, which one should we go to? Let's go to this one right here. This is the mature flower. So where are the calyx? You see the calyx right there at the bottom? Let me zoom in right there. You see the calyx right there? It's a sepal calyx. Right, the green part is pointing to the green part. Right, let's go to the next one right here. Let's go. No, before we get to that one, let's go to this one. You see right here. Okay, you see right there the sepals. You see what it says sepals right there. That's the calyx, calyx. Right, the calyx right there. Right. So now notice how this looks right here. It looks like a sun, doesn't it? You can see it looks like a sun. This flower here. 
right? And then you see the part that's the green part, right? That's the green part, right? Those are the parts that obviously if the sun we cannot physically see with our physical eyes. So many people thought that those things didn't exist. Some people think that the only things that exist is what we can see with our physical eyes, right? Apologize to your breath. Apologize to your breath while you, you know, and, and be thankful for it because notice the breath we cannot see, right? Even our thoughts, well, our words we cannot see. We can say we can hear them, right? Okay, right? So we see the sun, but how does the sun really move? Is the earth spinning at, at thousands of miles per hour, right? Around, around and around. And then while it spins around and around, it's spinning around the sun and the sun is spinning around and around. And then all of the, all of the, the so-called planets are also spinning around and around. And where are we going in all that spin? The truth of the matter is that the heavens is a globe. We acknowledge a celestial globe. So the globe that we do acknowledge is the heavens that turn around this earthly plane. But here you see the sepals here. Did we save this already? I think we did. We was talking right there. The sepals is the green part, right? The sepals or the calyx, the calyx. This is another one right here, the calyx. You see right there, the calyx. Notice where the part where it says the receptacle, right? The receptacle is much like the earth, the earth that receives the rays of light, you know, from the sun, the rays of light and also, of course, of energy and a lot of other things that our level of science hasn't fully, you know, um, documented, but is there and affect our lives. So you can see it right there. We basically touched on that. I think this one here might bring this out, flower structure, a little bit more so. Well, you see the sepals right there. It goes into more details, right? So when he said upon Gibeon, right? So I know some of you are saying, yeah, that's a stretch. It's a stretch, right? Because obviously you can understand, right, if it's a stretch. It is a stretch. It's a stretch from what they tell us. But then what they tell us takes more kind of faith to believe in without having any kind of real proof of it besides that they tell us everything is spinning, right? May, uh, thousands of miles, thousands of miles, thousands of miles. Not just that the sun is moving, but the earth is moving and all the planets are moving. Yet the constellations, you know, do remain consistent. Is that why they don't show us any pictures from so-called outer space of stars? Even when they say the NASA is showing us stars and planets, they show us it perfectly. Most other ones say it doesn't really look like that. And they say, well, NASA sees it like that, but still we don't see no stars. Take note calyx. of... Take note of... Calyx. Calyx. Take note of the calyx right there, right? <laughs> right there. Okay, let's, let's come off of that page right there. Going to seal this up right here for right now. So that's all we had to get to the root of it. Right, the calyx of a flower and also the convexing. Right? Now this is getting into the geometry, right, of the heavens and earth as well. But it's also revealing more truths, right, about the sun, about the heavens, about the earth, and about what the Bible records here with Yehoshua, right, saying to the sun to be silent. This now made I to think, say, wait, if the sun here was silent, literally what he's saying to the sun is to, shh, don't speak, don't speak, right? And it says that the sun, right, was still or the sun was silent, right? Let's go to the next verse just to seal this up right here. The next verse right here, and the sun stood. Notice that they put the word stood there, right? But it's still the word damam, right? It's still the word damam, to be silent, not to speak. And the moon stayed, the moon amad. Amad means to stand, right? Endure, right? Took one stand until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Then it says this, is not this written in the book of Jasher, Yasha? Yes, but which is the book of Jasher? There's a lot of bogus books of Jasher out there. You know, just to note that right there, the book of the upright, 
All right? Basically means the book of the upright. Is it talking about an actual book that was called the book of the upright? Right? Or is it speaking about in the records of those who were upright? So the sun stood still in the midst of the heaven. Look what it's saying. The sun, notice this right here. Now we have the word Ahmad. You see the word Ahmad? Ahmad means to stand. All right, to take one stand. Right? It says like to be stand, stand, to stand up, right? To be erect, to stand, to establish, to stood, right? To stand in various relations. Now notice what's being said here in these two verses. Right? And hasten not, it says, to go down. Now, if you say, see, the sun went down. The H935 says bow. Bow. What does bow mean? Bow means to go. Go. To go. See, they translated it as go down. Like they translated it as be still instead of as be silent. And here they should have said, and haste it not to go about the whole day. To go. To go forward. To keep going on. To keep it moving. All right? So the sun stopped this movement. But the command that Yehoshua gave, gave insight. Remember, Joshua... Joshua was a type of Moshe, a Messiah. And Joshua, he's, he's that one that spent his time with Moshe. So you got to learn certain things. And also that Joshua, Yehoshua, spent time in Ha Torah, right? Spent time in the divine theory, the theory, right? Called Torah. He spent time in that. So it's obvious that he understood to make this understood, stood, right? He understood in order to make this happen that he didn't say to the son, son, just, just stand, right? He, no, he said to the son, be silent, right? The son be silent, right? And then in the very same verse, remember it's Joshua chapter 10, verse 13. You see, it begins off here in verse 12, Right in verse twelve, he gives the command: Shemesh begibon dome, sun on Gibeon in a convex in a calyx. Be silent. Be silent in a calyx or a like a convex. Right, gonna get into the geometry, sacred geometry of the convex. Right, what is a convex? See here, it's actually speaking about physics. Physics is being brought out right here in this particular aspect of the scripture when rightly received. Verse 13, first part, consistent, damam, the dome, silent, right? Then later on when it says, is not this written in the cipher of Yasha or Yasha of the upright? So the sun stood, it amad, right? It amad, like someone stand, right? So first, the sun had to be silent because there are waves, right? Water is above and water is below. There are waves, right? Or for lack of a better word, what we refer to as water, right? But we know that water, even in this um, reality, we know water in three, in three stages. Solid, liquid, and gas, Right? And they say in outer space, they say there's gases, right? Right? But really the outer space is a part of the atmosphere of the earth. They actually verified that ancient knowledge there. The H 5975 is the Ahmad to stand. Right? But where did it stand? It says that it stood where? In the midst. Right? In the midst. Where's the midst? Right? Wow. Right? We have the word for midst. Like he says, he would dwell bit to calm. He would dwell in the midst of us. Bit to calm in the midst of you. Talk, 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 talk. But here he uses chatsi, chatsi. He uses the word chatsi, chatsi, chatsi. Chatsi is the middle, right? In the middle, right, of the Shemayim. Right of the Shem, right the or the, the Sham. Sham in Hebrew means the place of Mayim. 
in the place of the waters, the upper waters, a.k.a. the heavens, you know, the sky, the atmosphere. One can bring it out like that. So the first thing the sun had to do, right, was be silent. This is what I would like ones to consider, the silence of the sun. What science, right, could possibly be verified that's already known to those who understand some of the basic principles of science, right? We're looking at principles here, right? Because many of these principles can be applied to the earth as a plane or to what ones might refer to as the not flat, flat earth, you know, as an earthly plane, the sun standing still, right? The sun being silent, we're in the midst, the halfway. See, so when it says the midst of the heaven in the halfway point of that day, right? In the halfway point of that day. And this is the verse right here, here, here. Stand still, right? Shemesh, begibion, dom, stand still. A little bit more to come on this right here. I'd like to pick up on this convex, right? And what is the the calyx, right? Because we see what we see, right? But as science, even true modern science would tell us that a lot of things that we see behind these things that we can see is that which we don't see. You know, they discovered again, the atom, you know, and then also quantum, right? This is bringing us into the level of quantum physics right here. All right, so the Bible is still right and accurate when we are going to the linguistic science, the real science of the Bible, and applying it to what we know, right, of modern science or science, modern knowledge as it's known today. A little bit more to come on this, brothers and sisters. And yes, we have some more to share on the sun standing still. You know, did it stand still? What does it mean by standing still? The sun was silent, right? And the moon, the moon stood. Actually, the sun was silent upon Gibeon, right? In the halfway point, right? This is an eclipse right here, but in the halfway point, right? So the science from the Bible, but we just shared a few, a sneak peek in the science from the Hebrew Bible. Right, yes, Shalom Chabarim, Shalom.